Okay, this video shows what has been added for features in version 3.2 of Spire. So first of all, some enhancements to purchase orders. So we go into purchases and we add a PO, put a vendor on it, put in some product. I'll just put in a kit of products. So I'll choose a few of these. This is not a new feature, but very handy as well. This came out in version three. So I can choose those, put them on the purchase order. And now what we can do, instead of having to issue the purchase order right away, we can go ahead and go directly to receiving the purchase order. So it receives the PO in its, com in its entirety, asks if you want to create a vendor's invoice. We match that up, add the vendor's invoice number, post it, and then it asks you want to close the purchase order, and we go in and say yes, and it closes the PO and prints off the reports if required. So what we did there is basically uh, for customers that don't normally issue POs right away, but do want to receive their inventory and attach it, they can now create the PO, receive the PO, pay the invoice, or enter the invoice in accounts payable, and close it all in one step. Okay, something else we added here was in the if you unissue a purchase order, it stays open now, so you can go ahead and do your edits that you wanted to do. Uh, and then when you issue it, it also stays open. You can go ahead and print it if you want to, and then you just close it off. Okay, there's some changes in the user defined fields. So if I go to sales, to as an example, into a, an order, I go to my user defined tab. The data entry area has not changed, but under the properties, what I can now do is move things around. So if I take, say, this whole tab tracking and move it to the bottom, now the tracking tab's at the bottom. If I save and close it, see now the tracking tab's the last one, and info's the first one. Or if I want to move a field around, let's, let's go back to tracking, or to uh, size info, and go to UDF, and size info, we got width, length and height. I can now take height and move it up to the top, save and close it. And then under size info, height is now the top one. And then also what I can do is take a field and move it from one section to another. So if I want to take track date and move it up with, with info, like that, save and close it. And now that's under info is the track date. So it makes it really easy for, for the layout and design of your user to find fields. User to find fields can now also be designed uh, using our API for our third party developers and then also data added to the, the UDF fields with our API as well. Okay, and accounts payable. We made some changes to uh, batch payables. So what you can do now is you can sort by whatever column you wish here. If you want to pay, say, all of these vendors, and then you decide not to pay that one, you just unselect it. You can create, hit Create Batch, and those vendors get passed through to the batch, just like that. And we can now go ahead and just pay them all or just uncheck the ones we want. Of course, we can go ahead and add in our discount. So we're taking a discount on something, and then we can post it. So this so far... The posting part's the same, so we're going to pay all these items. And I print our check, which I'll cancel. And do they print successfully? Yes. Change paper, because there's some um, stubs that need to print on separate paper. And we won't pay those as either. And then now what we can do is go into the batches. So in the past, the batch was, was uh, disappears after you've uh, posted it but you can go into it now and see the posted batches. They just get marked as closed, but left behind. So here's the one we just created. Now, if we need to void a couple of checks, we can go ahead and just highlight the checks that we want to void. So in here, we see our transaction number for each one of them. And we can say void that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And we hit void payment. Are you sure you want to void them? Click OK. And then it voids them. So now they're completely void. And if we look at our screen, you'll see all the void transactions. So we we voided um, all those ones with a transaction number there. You'll see there's a lot more highlighted than I 
or a lot more with transactions on them than I highlighted, but that's because it voided the complete check, and these are showing the individual invoices. So um, this way, um, you're not, you cannot void a single transaction within a check, so it will take the whole check. So very handy if you get a problem with a, uh, a batch run where uh, the last 10 checks or something got jammed up or, or didn't print properly, you can go ahead and selectively um, repost the ones that you need to. Or if you decided that you didn't want some of the checks printed, you can just void them very, very easily. And because this batch now stays behind, it's always can be viewed. You can look at it, you can even print it out, uh, the, uh, the batch listing, not reprint the checks, but the batch listing at a later date as well. Okay, on the inventory list, we added a couple of fields. I'm just gonna choose this, this uh, old stock filter that I've created, and it just gives me a, a smaller list of fields. Uh, and you'll notice I've got two new columns, last sale date and last receipt date. So we know when we last sold it, and we know when we last received it. So what I've done here is I've, I've created a filter saying last sale date is before April 1st, 2016, so we know that three years ago was the last time we sold this product. So it's probably something we may want to get rid of. So just as a little edit we can thing we can do here, we go ahead and change the color of these so they show up on our on our on our lists with a, this green and red color on them and they'll show up on our sales orders and purchasers that way too so we don't um, accidentally order more of them if we haven't sold them for a while and then, and then also on the sales order if they turn up in that color we can tell the customer that uh, that we won't be getting any more of these if that's what we decide. That's just a good way of, uh, of filtering inventory now with those two new columns. Okay, so the next change in 3.2 is the ability to tell which company you're in when a dialog is open. So you'll see here that I've in my tray, I've got Inspire Health Systems and I've got Inspire Wholesale, so two different companies here. Um, if I had a module open like Accounts Payable, I couldn't tell which one. So this one I've got uh, Inspire Health Systems, you'll see at the top where it says Accounts Payable Dealers Manufacturing Co and Inspire Health Systems, and then I've also got payables open, and it says Inspire Wholesale at the end of it. So uh, if I, especially if I share vendors or share customers or even inventory, uh, then it's easy to tell if I've got multiple companies open at once, which company I'm actually working on. Okay, in sales orders, We have this column called phase right here. And I may have wanted to set a filter on phase where what I had to do in the past was choose phase off my list. And then you'd have to type in the phase name, remembering what it was. But here now I can just do a checklist and just add the phases that I want to see on my list for my filter. And then you can change that at any time. Of course, when you save a filter, it saves the check marks as the one you are wanting to review as well. Okay, in sales and purchasing, if I am going to use a U.S. or foreign currency customer or vendor, so in this case customer, you will see down at the bottom of the order, it says amounts in American dollars, but now it also says at 1.3310 um, percentage of, uh, for, the, for the currency rate. So now you know what rate it's at. And if you know that the rate is, has moved a lot from there, you can actually change this rate without leaving the order. It, but what it does, we've added a button at the top called open currency. You do need to have access to your multi-currency change in security and you can go ahead and change the rate to say 1.32, save and close that, and yes, and down the bottom here, now you see our rate has changed to 1.32. Now that's changed the rate for the whole system, not just for this order, so you wanna make sure that the person who has access to that doesn't just uh, 
change that without a good reason for it. But this is very good, especially for purchase orders, if you know that there's a large swing in the currency since the day that you created the purchase order before you go ahead and receive it. Now, it would balance itself out if you would have received it at the old currency rate. Uh, by doing gain loss, but this way you're actually receiving the true cost into the inventory item for your cost of goods. Okay, in sales, we now have some costs and percentages added to the footer of the order. So if I put in an item that I'm selling, it shows our average cost, margin, and percentage, current cost, margin, and percentage. Um, standard cost margin and percentage so that way for all three types of costs we're showing you what the uh, the uh, percentage is and the and the dollar uh, markup on each one of them is okay in sales order list view so let's just move our filters items view We've now added the cost columns to this list as well. So we've got average, current, and standard cost added to each of the each of the of the orders and each of the items on the order, because this is of course a list view of every item inside the order. So those have been added. So for for exporting those out to a spreadsheet to check different things with margins and such is these fields are are very helpful. Okay, the next feature we added to version 3.2 was the ability to take ownership of locked records. So we go into this sales order, we will see that its record cannot be modified because it's in use by John. So we've had this message before, but you've had now in the past go look for John to uh, to close that record, or if he had uh, was not in it anymore, he still had to go into the record and open it and save and close it to be able to release those locks. Or you had to get you, your techni technical people to release the locks um, through the database. Now what it is, we've got a new setting for a user that allows them to take ownership of those locks. So if I hit take ownership, then I can now modify this and it's put my initials on this as having the locks on it. And then when I save and close this, it releases those locks completely. Now you don't want to be using this and giving this feature to everybody because you, know, you need to have a responsible person that knows that if those locks are opened by somebody else and indeed is working on that sales order, then the two people both have access to it and the last person to save wins and the other person's um, changes do not get saved. Okay, in inventory, we've added a new tab. So I'm going to go to a raw material. So this is a raw material that I use in production. So we've got a new tab in here called production. And this shows all of my open production orders where this piece of raw material is being used, all the templates I have where it's being used, and all history of where it got used. So this is the, the actual uh, raw material. And then I can, if it's orders, I can actually go into those orders from here and work on those production orders from here or report on them or print them. Same thing as in templates, I can edit those. And in sales history, I can drill down to see the history of those items by clicking on them. By just double clicking on one of them, it opens it up and I see that historical build of uh, when it was built and what components were, were used besides just this piece of raw material. Okay, in inventory adjustments, I can now add items to be adjusted. And I'll just throw a couple of items on here. Okay, so I'm going to put minus one of these and minus two of these and I will see that on a line by line basis I can put a reference so if the, you can put a, a person's name on here or a reference number of some kind then you can actually type in here a reason for 
uh, why this item was was uh, written off. So maybe we gave this gave to fundraiser or something like that. Okay, and then when that gets posted, that data gets saved with history, so we can go back and view and print that at any time in the future. Okay, from the inventory list, so let's say we're going to go in to look at our weights. We've got a customer that wants to possibly buy some, some weights from us. So he wants to look at uh, all of our kettlebells. So we can tell him from here we've got stock on on some and not others. So he, he wants to go ahead and buy some of the, of the 15s, the 20s, the 25s, the 48s and the fives, because that's the ones we have stock on right now. I can highlight those and then go create sales order. And it creates a, a new order. All you need to do is add the customer's name onto it and go ahead and uh, and uh, either invoice it or process a sales order. Okay, besides those features, uh, there's been some very good speed increases on on large orders. So sales, purchase, and production orders are, are a lot faster, especially in production orders. And we've increased the speed of the inventory count when having large amounts of uh, quantities of items being being counted. So that's gotten much faster as well. So that's version 3.2. Upgrade to it and enjoy the new features.